When the FBI track serial killers, they look for characteristics to identify the criminal. We build profiles for cyber criminals to do the same thing. We identify their modus operandi, their objectives, and eventually we want to identify their future behavior. Hi, I'm Dan Brett, CSO of Countercraft, and I'm here with Rich Barrel, head of our cyber deception product. And I want to know what can we do to get inside the mind of our adversaries. Rich, what exactly is cyber profiling? A profile is a way of gathering together information about what an adversary is doing, what their objectives are, the type of tools that they use, and the type of information and the objectives that they have in trying to, what's driving their activity, what's driving their attack. So what exactly is the profile of an average cyber criminal? Good question, Dan. There's no such thing as an average cyber criminal. And that's why we build profiles, to gather, gather, gather together the information about the criminal and identify the individual that's behind it, or the individual or the group. We're gathering together information on where they are, uh, where they're, the tools that they're using, but also the repeatable behavior patterns so that we can take this information uh, and use it to track repeated behavior throughout our deception environment. Okay, so there's no average profile, there's just these different characteristics. But how can I then use this information to design a specific deception campaign? Well, this is really great because once you, once you build a deception campaign, you're looking, you may start out on a very general way, but once you start to build profilers of attackers or you have profiles of attackers that you want to focus on, you can take elements of their activity and use that to craft the campaign around them so it's directly focused to them and we can extract much more data from them. And that's why it's so important to take the focus of who you're trying to get, the target, include the target into your design for your deception design. Right. It all seems really abstract right now. We're talking about characteristics and stuff. On an exact and a more concrete level, what could I do that would be an adaptation of something to a particular characteristic? Uh, if you were looking for someone that you were concerned that you had a vulnerability with the exfiltration of data, for example, right. you could build a campaign that would provide the adversary with choices and you can look at assuming they're going to exfiltrate data, the next question is what sort of data they are going to exfiltrate? What are they looking for? What are their objectives? So by providing choices, let's say between uh, financial data or engineering data or personnel data, you can monitor the time that they take in each place, you can where, identify what their first effort is, and then you can start to draw conclusions about the objectives from that. I get it. So knowing that this criminal is going to exfil data at some point, I can choose a kind of an appropriate type of data and it will tell me more about what they're after, is that right? That's, that's sort of it, and providing choices, the key is choices. Okay. So Rich, why do we use these characteristics in campaign design? It's simple, Dan. You don't use a fly to catch uh, a shark. You don't use a side of beef to catch a salmon. Um, we can build our campaign around the type of uh, adversary that we're targeting. We build the breadcrumbs, we build the trap environment, if you like, or the honey environment, um, based on the people that we're targeting. Uh, that's a basic element of campaign design. Build something focused on who you're trying to attack or who's trying, you're trying right. to get information you're trying to gather. Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. And so, like, what characteristics do I actually need to be part of a good profile? Um, well, there are all sorts of different characteristics that you can have, but a good profile will contain um, information leading to the identity of, of the criminal, not the name and social security number, but where are, they, where are they coming from? Are they repeatedly coming from the same geographical location or are they moving around? You can mm -hmm. identify them. Uh, you can identify skill levels. You can identify the use of tools. Are they using a particular tool set? Are they using particular uh, vulnerabilities? Are they just repeating things that they've read online? Is this a script kiddie in a basement or is this a highly focused um, national level or nation state threat actor? Because there's a lot of complex data there. So how can I access or make use of that in deception tooling? Well, how can you access it? I mean, the Countercraft platform provides a whole lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing a lot of work now to take what is the presentation of raw data and contextualize that. So we're providing context. So you can see this raw data. You can look at it. It provides you with a great deal of information. We provide a lot of enrichment from third party sources, mm -hmm. uh, such as geolocation, IP abuse, and so on. Um, but we can also feed back 
uh, the information that we've gathered within a profile into the data stream. So we can start to see, well, if we're spotting repeated patterns of be behavior, we can attribute those patterns to a known actor. Um, and this is a r another advantage of using the profiling within the Countercraft platform, because we get that sort of feedback loop. Okay, so the platform creates data which can be used for profiling. Does it actually have profiles in there somewhere? Or do they, is it just something that you create manually afterwards using the tool? Well, it's a bit of both. Both, uh, okay. Out of, out of the box, we have uh, a threat actor database which contains over a hundred uh, threat actors okay. that have been defined. Um, and we have a threat intel team, um, as you know, the guys in the office who are working very hard to increase that database. Um, in addition, if we're in certain organizations where we're working that have their own threat actor databases, they've imported this data into the platform to get... And these are like mini profiles? They're mini they? profiles, yes. Okay. They contain um, a description of who they are, any aliases, um, TTPs that they're known to use, known IOCs, right. uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So every time we spot something, we can add data to that to mm -hmm. make it more valuable. And we can tag if, for example, we detect a known and all previously identified pattern of behavior, we can tag an alert and so right. on. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So once you've got a security profile, uh, what security steps can you take you know, going forward to, to in, in improve security? Another good question, Dan. Um, the answer to that is basically with a, a good profile, uh, you're building uh, literally a card that has the tools the techniques, the TTPs that, that, uh, that an adversary is using. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you've heard of the Pyramid of Pain by David Blanco, it says the toughest thing for an adversary to change are their TTPs. So once you've identified the TTPs that are associated with a, with a, um, a particular threat actor, you can take that information and use that to reinforce your security policy. Um, we also provide within the, the platform itself a series of um, mitigations for known TTPs. So if you've detected a particular TTP, we will also show you the mitigation that, or the steps that you can take to mitigate the risk of that TTP. And basically you're using this information not only to identify, but also to, to reinforce and reassess your security policy, but also prioritizing, because now you have a list of your, where your vulnerabilities are. So if you know that a particular threat actor is going to be doing a particular thing, you can take that and fix that problem, fix that vulnerability, plug that hole, uh, and in, therefore mitigate the risk. Right, I can see that. So you, you're basically getting a lot of info but about people that are actually attacking your yes. infrastructure, yes. right? So you can then take steps to fix it. I think it's absolutely fascinating. Now, if you want to know more about this, Rich, you've written a good number of blog posts, and so do our Threat Intel team. We regularly write about profiling. So please check out our blog to keep yourself updated on all these areas.